10 people were grocery shopping when a shooter opened fire in Boulder King Supers and ended their lives. Today, after waiting three years, their families and other victims will see the man finally go to trial. Thanks for joining us at noon. I'm Brianna Fernandez. The shooting happened back in March of 2021, but it's faced many delays related to Ahmad's Alyssa's competency. Courtney Yoon tells us what to expect with the trial that could last more than a month. This case has been delayed for more than two years, but jury selection begins today, a process that could take a while. The man charged with killing 10 people at the Taba Mesa King Supers in 2021, Ahmad Alyssa, pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity, though his attorneys have acknowledged he was the shooter. He was first deemed not competent to proceed to trial that year. Then the shooter spent two years in treatment, which included forced medication at the Colorado Mental Health Institute in Pueblo. After all that, his competency was restored last Last fall, with the judge overseeing the case calling his mental health, quote, tenuous. Then came the not guilty plea. Now the burden will fall to prosecutors to prove not only that he committed the crimes, but that he was not insane when he did. The shooter is charged with 10 counts of first degree murder after deliberation, meaning that he thought about and intended to cause the deaths. For the families of the victims, the delays in court have been frustrating. You know, it's going to be a very hard and emotional time for me and my family when we have to hear the details of my niece's murder, you know, and the other nine victims. This week, prospective jurors will come into court to fill out questionnaires that will then be turned over to the defense and prosecution. On September 3rd, attorneys will be able to interview those prospective jurors in person. We could hear opening statements as early as September 5th. In Boulder, Courtney Yoon, Nine News. Another disturbing case is also in court today. A former Littleton bus aide was arraigned this morning at 11, on 11 assault and child abuse charges. Video caught Kiara Jones punching a nonverbal student repeatedly. We do want to warn you this video can be hard to watch. The video of her hitting a child sitting next to her was taken back in March of 18th. But families believe the abuse began well before then. Attorneys representing several families said the children had unexplained injuries, including bruises, a lost tooth, a broken toe, and a black eye. Officials with Littleton School said they are planning to do random audits of school bus surveillance video and making buses with special needs children a priority. Jo Jones pleaded not guilty to all her counts. Trial, her trial is now set for February. An investigation is underway into what sparked a fire at a storage facility in Boulder that kept crews busy all morning. They say as many as 14 units at the facility on Arapaho Avenue were affected. No one has been hurt. Arapaho Avenue had to be shut down between 55th Street and Cherry Vale for several hours. But good news, it is back open. Fire crews are back at the former sugar mill in Longmont fighting flames that sparked overnight on Sunday. Crews have been letting the fire burn out, but this morning they've still been trying to control the flames. However, Mountain View Fire Rescue says unstable and hazardous conditions inside the building have been keeping firefighters outside and away from those flames. No word how long it will take to burn out. The Aurora City Council will vote tonight on the man the city manager chose to be the new police chief. We know former Los Angeles Police Commander Todd Chamberlain was formally introduced at a news conference on Thursday. He's also served as the police chief for the L.A. Unified School District. APD has faced allegations of racism and bias policing and is under a consent decree. That means the department is legally bound to a reform plan. If he's confirmed by city council during tonight's 6 o'clock meeting, he'll be sworn in on September 9th. Tomorrow, the Boulder community will be able to hear from the last three finalists for police chief there. The city announced the finalists before picking one. Tomorrow night at 6, Stephen Redfern, Leonard Redhorse, and Josh Wallace will be introduced at a community forum in city council chambers. The forum will be live streamed on the city's YouTube page. Now we still have some cloud cover right now, but we still got some beautiful views around us. You can see it right there on your screen. We should have some isolated gusty storms, but good news, it is mainly going to be a dry week. So let's bring in Nine News Weather Impact Meteorologist Keely Charmers. Keely, what can we expect for the rest of the week? Said, we are in store after today for a dry and warm week. We actually have a bit of a cool down 
come uh, Thursday. But uh, temperatures are going to once again reach the low 90s at least one day this week. We do have the cloud coverage out there right now. We have mid to upper level clouds moving in, a little bit of moisture, and that is going to uh, bubble up into some isolated storms as we head into the afternoon. But you can clearly see mostly cloudy skies out there right now. Live radar seeing that moisture streaming in from the southwest, and we are seeing those showers, a little bit of lift up there across the high country uh, just west of Gunnison. Some thunderstorm activity, some lightning strikes, and continue just light showers as this uh, moisture moves across our area this afternoon. Get a little bit of daytime heating, and we'll see some of those isolated storms uh, bubble up as well as we head into the afternoon. Current temperatures out there, 81 degrees already here in Denver. We're looking mainly 70s and 80s across the plains, 60s and 70s up there in the mountains. So for the metro area today, we'll call it mostly cloudy, a little bit of sunshine, and just about a 30% chance we'll see some afternoon storms. Highs getting up to 86 degrees. We're looking at 80s and 90s once again across the plains and your weather headlines for this Monday. Again, isolated storms in the forecast for today, mainly east of I-25. It is going to be dry all week after today, and we're talking about warm temperatures as well, mainly 80s. But one day we will see temperatures in the low 90s. We'll talk about that, give you all your weather details coming up in your full forecast in just a bit. Keely, thank you so much. We're months away from the next Colorado legislative session, but state lawmakers are back at the Capitol today for a special special session. Governor Polis called the special session as part of a deal to keep two property tax ballot issues from appearing on November's ballot. Those ballot issues would limit future property tax increases and could cost the state billions to backfill local governments and school districts that would lose tax revenue. A small group of lawmakers have drafted a compromise tax bill, which could would limit tax increases without going as far as the ballot initiatives. That solution faces pushback from lawmakers who say they were kept in the dark about the deal and from critics who say even smaller tax cuts could be devastating for local governments. The Federal Trade Commission's lawsuit against the Kroger and Albertsons merger is playing out in an Oregon courtroom today. The FTC sued the to try to block the merger, saying it would eliminate competition and raise grocery prices. The two companies deny that would happen, adding it would help them compete with big rivals like Walmart and Costco. The judge will hear both sides to decide whether to grant the FTC's request for a preliminary, preliminary injunction. The hearing could last up to three weeks. DPS is dealing with 1,000 more students than last year, and the districts had to make some changes to accommodate. The rise in population is largely migrant students joining the district. A lot of the planning the district's done centered around how many students would be in each class and then how many desks and how many teachers were needed. More than 4,700 new-to-country students enrolled with DPS throughout the last year. About 3,000 of those kids came after the state's October count that determines the funding schools get. The director of enrollment with the district says that's nowhere near normal and it's hitting DPS's bottom line. Very, very unusual um, to, the, to the point that I think that that's probably the first time that the DPS has accepted that number of that number of kids um, past count day. We estimated that it would have been 20 million more dollars in our budget had all of those students been there at October count. The state approved $5 million in funds for DPS to help with migrant students coming late in the year. That money is still helping the district as it continues adding staff, teachers, and resources, particularly for schools like Brian Webster and McMean Elementary, where majority of these new students are enrolled.